but it felt like there was a lot of times more often than, than previously where he's the safety. He's the last line of defense. He's got to be the guy who's got to make the final tackle. If he gets past everybody else, he's got to make the tackle. There's so many times it felt like he missed tackles, uh, was out of position. Uh, just, I'm thinking, it's like, man, I love this guy, but man, this has not been a good year for the defense and for, for Diggs as well. So, in his first year, he didn't make the pro, uh, pro Bowl either. He had made it three years in a row prior to that. So, I was not completely surprised when I saw it. I was a little bit surprised, but not completely. Uh, we have Julian Love back there. Clearly, that dude has earned his stripes. He's going to be the safety moving forward. But now we've got holes to fill in the safety position. You know, in addition to linebacker, we've got holes to fill. On the defensive line, we got hole, holes to fill. we got more holes to fill now. Tight end now. we got to start looking for tight end. These were positions I wasn't even thinking about in terms of our positions of need. And now we've got really just positions of need, which is why they got to open up this money space to get, uh, have a room to sign these other guys. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, this is all priming up for what's going to happen next week when the free agency craziness begins. All right, so what does that result in? That's going to be $11 million saved against the cap. Believe it or not, getting rid of Andre Diggs actually saved more money than, than cutting Jamal Adams. 7.3 for Jamal being cut, $11 million cutting Andre Diggs. So financially, it made a lot of sense. Obviously, they must have a plan to replace him because we really need depth and safety oh, now. Him. Uh, besides, we got to do in love. So we'll see what happens. Everyone. With this, that was the only one that I think it's been talked about because I think Kobe Parkinson was probably the most likely tight end that they would keep of the three. Um, no fan expected to be gone in free agency, but with this league was under contract. But I remember when he signed his extension, I remember a lot of people, including myself, thinking, man, that's a lot of money for a guy whose main job is just to block. Uh, not the most productive in terms of pass catching. I remember his first year, he, he, he did great, got an injury. I remember he was an Achilles or something and uh, kind of cut that short, but never quite lived up to that hype of, you know, being like that number one tight end. You know, we had three, gr- three good tight ends, but never, not one who really rose up and being. I say Noah Fan was the most productive one, but we're kind of that search out for that tight end, that magic guy who's going to be a good Kobe Parkinson, be that guy. Will they make moves to keep him here longer term? Uh, a lot to be decided here. So, Will Disley, in his final year last year, played 16 games, uh, 17 catches for, out of 22 <sighs> targets, 172 yards, and a touchdown. Not exactly blow your mind numbers and justify a bigger contract than he had. So the cut by losing him uh, saves the Seahawks. Uh, let's see, it is 6.97 mil against the Caps, a little bit less than Jamal Adams. So again, it, uh, it made sense. I looked at it. And I was, I wasn't like, how could they do that? I was like, it kind of, kind of. Said, same with like Andre Diggs. It was that same feeling. Not like as much as my hands. Like, yeah, that was good. But it felt like we could do better. We could do better. We need the, we need the cap space for sure. So, with all that, oh, by the way, oh, look at this. 12th Man Cam. Welcome to NorFam. As an all pro member. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And 12th Man Cam. I like the cam part of it. Joining the NorFam as an all pro member. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, your support, brother. Uh, okay, so. What does this mean, total savings? So, they, the Seahawks save, with those moves, they save $34.5 million in cash, and in total, $25 million against the cap. So now the Seahawks have $36 million in cap space that they've now gained. But the combination of the increased cap this year, plus that uh, $25 million, we now got $36 million. So now we got some room to play with, but I don't think they're done. I think they got some contract work to do top of that list of salary cap uh, numbers now uh, with the new update. Tyler Lockett, number one there with a 26.895, 26 million cap hit, almost 27. Geno Smith the second with 26.4 million, and then DK Metcalf, 24.5 million. I don't think any of those three guys are going anywhere, but maybe they can work some of that, I don't know how they work that magic. It's like, oh, Big cap hit. Uh, let's just convert some of the signing bonus and roster bonus into signing bonus and I kick the can down the line. I don't know. They find some way to work it out. 
but hopefully they can do that and just get a little bit of that number. It's not about money, right? There's plenty of money. Jody Allen's got plenty of money. It's just about that cap. We've got to work out that cap space so that the number works. And I figure they'll, they'll, they'll work something out with those guys, hopefully. Uh, I mean, they already re reworked Gino, so he's kind of set. The question is, DK, Lockett, can they do anything else to convert some of that you know, signing bonus, roster bonus business? And uh, hang on, you guys, on the, the lines. I see you, Cam, PDX Cam, and uh, over at Phoenix. Uh, I'll get to you guys momentarily. So there you go. Those are the numbers we got. And so for me personally, I'm really not disappointed. I'm in that mindset now where I've kind of, with this whole season, with Pete Carroll leaving or being let go, and the new coach, new coordinators, you know, I'm, I'm really on that set. And I mentioned, too, that even a guy like Bobby Wagner, I hate that I've kind of been, had to embrace that reality that as much as I love the nostalgia of keeping the name there, I don't think it's the best move for the team moving forward. So I feel like Bobby Wagner's probably played his last game with the Seahawks. I'd be actually kind of surprised if they keep him uh, for another year. But we'll see. The guy can tackle. The, the problem is, where do those tackles happen? And can he keep up with guys in coverage? That part is definitely slowed down in this game. So. Love you, Bobby. But I think for the team moving forward, I feel like a lot of new leaves to turn over. So uh, we will see what happens uh, in the next few days. Next week's going to be very, very interesting. That's when things are really get crazy. Because the, uh, the, the legal tampering period, I believe, starts on Monday. And then the actual signing of free agents to teams will start happening on Wednesday. So that's going to be blowing up all day uh, uh, for sure on Wednesday, if not sooner. So. It's going to be fun to see, but I'd expect this much blood for the hatchet to be spilled so quickly uh, in this beginning part of the week. So let me just get started, man. If you like, this is 2010 all over again when uh, P. Carroll and Josh Snyder were like making tons of moves every day. Move roster this, cut this, move that guy. It's crazy. Uh, Ivy Dave Jones says Tyler is 29, and he did say he wanted to play till he's 30. So. Another year left on Tyler Lockett. So I, mean, I still think the guy slowed down definitely last year a little bit, but I think he's still got a little bit of gas in the tank left. Oh, actually, Ivy Jones is he's 31. Okay, I don't know. I haven't checked his age like that. I still think he can play. I mean, he could catch at the end of the season. He's the Cardinals to get no win. Uh, pointless, as it turns out, win against the Cardinals, but win nonetheless. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens there. I see people talk about getting rid of DK. Uh, you guys get the test going on there. Um, debating about that. DK, I feel like, again, we can unlock that beast. I, I, I'm really excited to see what, what Ryan Grubb. I would love to see Ryan Grubb with the same trio of receivers, a new tight end possibly, and with the same quarterback, Dino Smith. I want Ryan Grubb to prove to me and everybody, for all the haters and all of us, let's trade DK, get rid of Dino, he sucks, blah, blah, blah. Now, with the right coordinator and a new coaching scheme, I feel like he's going to unlock this. And it's, we're going to see, like, oh my God, where has this been this whole time? And these guys have been here together? Why have we not seen this before? I guess... We'll find out. And it was just so, in, it, it's such an indictment when we saw, I don't know if you guys saw the interview uh, during the Super Bowl week when Jackson Smith and Jigba was asked. So there's a lot of fans excited about Shane Waldron coming as her office of coordinator to Chicago. Uh, how do you feel about uh, Shane Waldron? And he could not say anything. He was like, um, am I live right now? I mean, it was shocking. I, I was surprised how much he was not prepared to answer that question. But it told, it told the real raw truth about what he thought about, you know, Shane Walter. Because, you know, if, just like uh, Russell, anytime anybody leaves the team, Russell Wilson leaving the Broncos or, you know, a coach moving on, the players will shout him out. Say, oh, man, you're getting a great coach. Like when McDonald came here, Ravens players just blown up. So, oh, you guys are getting a great coach. You guys can love him in Seattle. I don't know one person saying you're going to love Shane Waldron in Chicago. And that to me tells me a lot about that short time that he was here that it never quite lived up to what expect expectations we had. Well, I think we kind of know why. It just wasn't the right fit. So, obviously, sh sh reshuffled the deck. It's fresh all over the place. So, you know, no longer can we say, oh, it was Pete Carroll. He was always
just holding the reins back or this and that. I mean, it's going to be completely wide open. The only common denominator now in terms of the management side is John Schneider, who's got total say on personnel. Outside of that, all coaching decisions, there's going to be a whole new, whole new, uh, whole new thing. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what, where this goes, but we are just getting started, folks. All right, I'm going to jump in and start grabbing some phone calls here. Hopefully this phone kind of works very uh, let's see. Let's go to full my PDX cam. PDX cam. Let's see. Hold on a second. Let me get you in here. I haven't done this in a while. PDX cam, is this you? Oh, yeah, there you go. PDX cam. Oh, that's not here. Right? That's a good sign. PDX cam in the house. Can you hear me over there? Hopefully I'm not doing some technical issues. Let me find out here. I'm not gonna hear it. Might fall. Are you doing something from ending the video? Perfect. Do I have that cookie now? No. <sighs> Man, I gotta chase Eggman in a freaking car. This is weird. Not, huh? I know, I'm chasing Eggman in a taxi. It's kind of weird. I don't know. You know him. He's always causing mischief. What do you expect? I beat the crap out of him in judo. I mean, why are you chasing him in a taxi cab? What are you trying to do? Try to catch a taxi you try to catch, uh, taxi for you need a ride? <laughs> I think Eggman is up to his own shenanigans again, so what do you expect? Wait a minute, I... it's been a pig this whole time? Idiot. Oh my god! What the fuck? Let's alone everybody, don't be an idiot just like Jada. Shut up! And, and I don't know what I want to say about the call from, from Cat in the Hat, I would say this. And you're stupid just like your mom. Shut up. And you're stupid and ugly, like your mom. Oh yeah, um, I'm gonna be filming more of this starting tomorrow, so like, um, cause I finished Mega Man, like, last night or yesterday. So I'm gonna be filming in the morning, I'm gonna be filming in the, in the afternoon, I'm gonna be filming at night. So Nightfall is allowed to join whenever he wants. The morning is between me pulling up an all-nighter. And the afternoon is usually between noon and 2 p.m. And then, depending if Nightfall shows up or not, it usually can be set back. Yeah. Um, so, the nightly ones have a different kind of schedule. They just are now remained unscheduled because depending on Nightfall's attendance, which is not his fault. So stop coming at him for attendance it really isn't his fault whatever comes up he has a life outside of youtube and so do i yeah true that hey, you, I like. you had my back and i'm having yours this is kind of a good in payback tradition and also we're not like we're not like that youtuber jack dolphin yeah whatever that guy's name is but uh yeah the guy just, he, and he making himself worse, by the way. Well, I mean, you do that stuff, and you just are an idiot. <laughs> well, I heard that he tried to apologize for him, but he, he didn't make... I'm not it. buying it, because I think the whole thing with the, like, there's another thing that people have been doing, like, someone asked on Twitter to me, what are the top three good contents for YouTube? Okay. This has been a big banger for probably a while. You got video games. Um.
if you like to make music or you're doing music covers, uh, just be careful of that. I say music is a good one, but be careful because of the copyright system. So you got to be cautious if you're going to do music. Um, what's another one? Um, if you're into the baking and the cooking and you like to do that stuff and to help people, yeah, that that's a good one. Um, you know, as long as it's not something that people are going to be like, yeah, I don't like your video. Uh, I know a lot of girls are now into that makeup and freaking Sephora and all that, which I'm not a fan of. I mean, I didn't even want to wear makeup on my graduation day. It really made me angry. Nice. Yo, Tom, stop yelling. Oh, goal. Run into... If I run in with you, like, in a good way... Then I have. Then he does the game stream. He does video game. Uh, he does sports streaming. Sport. Yeah, sports. Like you know, streaming the game. But he doesn't show the game. He just does a reaction because YouTube will come at your ass because it's copyright. I mean, I hate it. Fucking Chipotle. Chipotle's gotta stop. Shit. Oh, what happened? Nah, the other team scored, and I'm not liking that. Uh, the sport. I get it. Fuck! I don't like that. He's right upstairs from me, Tom, so... They Buddy, just... have you heard of the movie called Blessed Club? I think a little bit, I just haven't... I've seen bits and pieces, but not the whole thing. Well, have you seen... Have you known the episode of Family Guy where Peter had to go undercover by go opposing the Lando Griffin? Yeah. Yeah, well, some of the... Some of the part of it, he got retired from it, from the, from the movie. Between the... Oh my God, Breath of Club. <laughs> remember and that. that? Remember the. Uh, remember the one with Bird is the word. <laughs> yeah, I know. He kept singing it, and then he said, uh, "You can have my daughter." But I, I'm just trying to uh, keep it clean for the viewers. Yeah, you know that's not really his daughter. Yeah, I know. It wasn't really Meg. It was just some other lady. Well, even if she did point at Meg, then he would say, no way, she ugly. Yeah, because Meg is one of the ugly stepsisters, like, from that story of Cinderella with the two ugly stepsisters. What do you think is? She's a well, I have to be honest, the, the evil twin, the evil stepsister, they're, they're okay if they need to lose the attitude and lose the... Mom. Mom. Well, Yep, then they will be a lot prettier. But Meg, she's she uglier because you know she's want to be want to be want to and all because I don't, she want to be popular and she want to get respect from kind to Nico, the most the most popular bitch on in school. Yeah, that's why I don't do stuff like that. I mean, I was popular in high school, but I think people knew who my goddad was because. I mean, yeah, people hung out with me as, like, an advantage, but some people just stood and had my back. They didn't... I don't want to be popular. I'd rather be, I'd rather be just an underground student. Well, I actually out. did that as a reason just to get back at, you know, our arch nemesis. That was your goal. Well, yeah, I, I, I did that for you as well, because remember, I hadn't forgotten about our friendship. I know. It's been 10 years. Has it? No, it's been more than that. Remember when we met in 2012? It's been more than 10 years, buddy. Oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't, don't count. I can just do the math after we finish this video. It's almost been 12 years. Oh, shit, how did you do all that math? Let me say I'm quite weird.
Alright guys, that was the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Jade out. Nightfall! Wait, don't stop Jay from starting the video.